Is Terry D Lab, do you have a Johnson Ranger that doesn't have modulation? In this video, let me show you a quick way to trace that problem down. Let's go. So first, let me give you a little bit of history about this Ranger. It comes from a friend of mine, and he was a big time collector. He had like a basement full of all these classic radios. And now it's time for him to reduce his collection. So he dropped this radio as well as some others off and asked me to go through them, fix them up, and sell them for him. So that's where the Ranger came from. This is not a swap meet special. It's actually in beautiful condition. I saw no signs of maintenance except. All right, I've got the Ranger powered. This one does not have push to talk in it yet. If I get this thing all figured out and it's working beautiful, then I will add that feature. But right now we have to use the old function switch. So I have the Ranger tuned up. There's my plate current. Nice dip. If you look over there, we're getting about eh, 50 watts or so. So it's got full power out. If you go to modulation, you'll see that my modulation current is right on the money. But crank up the old audio game. Absolutely no audio. No swing on the meter. So that's strange, right? So in this situation, a lot of you would say, well, I'm just gonna change out all the tubes. Well, you know what? If you have the proper modulation resting current like we do, you can assume that the modulation transformer and the 6L6s are probably okay. So the problem is in the preamp section. For some reason, that microphone signal is not getting to the grid of those 6L6s. So let's turn it outside and see if I'm right. Before we dive into the repair, I just want to clarify that I've already replaced the power supply filter caps as a precaution. So there's the 10 microfarad 700 volter, 47 microfarad 450 on the low voltage supply, and there's two of these 22 microfarad caps one of them is for negative bias and one of them goes to the 12AU7. I have not changed the coupling caps in the audio section yet, okay? So the problem is somewhere here is what I believe. This is the audio preamp and driver section and these two sockets are the 6L6s, right? So let's take a look at the schematic first and then we'll develop a game plan. All right, so here we go. You don't need a bunch of fancy test equipment to troubleshoot these old radios, okay? You just need a good DVM. Make sure you have a good set of leads. I'm gonna power up the Ranger. The beauty of the Ranger is, is you do not have to key this thing up to measure the voltages going to the preamp section. It is always active, okay? So that's kind of nice, so you don't have to worry about exposing yourself to RF or the high voltage off this section down here, all right? But the low voltage power supply is running. All right, so I have a schematic here, and I'm gonna be focusing on the speech amp, all right? So we're just gonna walk across the 12AX7 and over to the audio driver and see if we spot any issues. If you have your Johnson manual, you will see that they have a chart showing the voltages going to these tubes. That's where you always want to start, okay? If it's just a missing voltage, it's an easy fix. All right, so referring to your schematic, if you look off of this filter cap, the 47 microfarad, we have 378 volts, something like that, dancing around because I don't have a real good connection. That goes up and feeds the 12AX7 tube through a 220K and a 47K, and then it goes to these 470Ks. And these feed the plate of the 12AX7, okay? So you got one plate on pin one, and one plate on pin six. So let's see if I can get pin one without arc welding this thing. Okay, that's insulated. All right, it's going to be a little tricky, guys. Pin one. What do we got? 
There it is. 144 volts. So you can refer to your tube chart. Okay, now here is the other 470K. Going to pin 6. Now that looks really bad. 1.2 volts. Okay. That 12AX7 is not going to amplify anything at 1.2 volts. So I'm going to kill the Ranger. It's unplugged. Let's make sure that the power supply is discharged. And then let's check the resistance on pin 1 and pin 6 to ground. Like I say, all you need is a multimeter. So let's go to 20K scale. Here is pin 1. So pin 1 to ground, pretty much open. And I would expect that to be true because you want to feed it with the power supply and then there's a coupling cap leaving it so there shouldn't be any resistance to ground okay here's pin six okay same thing pin six is also above 20k let's step it up let's go to 200k pin one open pin six Ah, look at there. Got uh, about 123K to ground on pin 6. So if you look at your schematic, what could possibly have 123K ohms to ground off of pin 6? So you got the 470K feeding it. There is a cap, a 500 puff cap, which is right there. Mica, and then there's a coupling cap here, which is a 0.022 going over to the 12AU7. And look at there, I've got the same resistance on that side of the 0.022 microfarad cap. Now that's kind of strange, isn't it? How could I possibly have the same resistance on both sides of that cap, unless the cap, for some reason, is shorted? That'd be odd. Okay, so go down to our 20k scale. Let's see what we got over here. Well, it's not shorted, but I've got uh, about 475k across the cap. So my guess is we could either have a very leaky 0.02 microfarad cap or the 500 puff cap is leaking to ground, pulling pin 6 down. So the best way to isolate this is we're going to desolder the resistor and the two caps for pin 6 and then measure them individually. I'm going to take a little bit of solder wick and desolder everything on pin 6. Not easy for you to show you the process, but I really don't want to cut and interrupt any of the components. I just want to desolder the pin and carefully undo the leads and fold all the components back. Okay, I do see a slight heat mark here on the 470K resistor. Obviously, when he's being pulled right to ground with like uh, 378 volts on the other side, the resistor is going to have to take the hit. All right, I got to get in here. So you get the idea. I'm going to get these things removed and we'll test. All right, all three leads are lifted. Time to take the meteoroid and find the culprit. What are we listening to? Toy. Space Radio. Alright, I had to kill that so I don't get popped. Alright, so I got the meter still set up at the 200K scale. Here is the 470K. Okay, so is he good? Let me go up here. 496k. So he didn't open up. Let's go back to ground. 200k. 
Here is the 500 Puff Mica. Remember, we're looking for about 123K, right? That was a violator. So it's not here. It's not here. So what about the .022? Kabammy. Look at there. 157K. I'm measuring from a floating lead over to the 12AU7. So let's go across that. If I don't drop my meter. Make it easy. I'll clip this one on. Go over here and check it. What do we got? Oh, Scalzal! 0.8K. There it is, guys. The 0.022 is El Chateau. Now, if you were to have gotten into your Ranger and just put in a cat kit, you would never see this, right? But now we know that this 0.022 is a violator, and look at look at the end of it. It's like all cracked and some red stuff there, right? We're seeing the core of the cap. All right, so what I'm going to do, just for the fun of it, we're going to put in a new cap. We'll reconnect these two guys, see if the problem goes away. Now here we go, and the new cap is installed. So let's verify resistance first. I'm back at the 200K scale. Remember, we had 123K from pin six to ground. Now that is gone. All right, let's go to the other side. We see that 156K. So when that cap was leaking, obviously this resistance was going over here and irritating this guy, right? All right, so let's see if we have our high voltage back at this point. So I'm gonna plug it in. DC voltage. Look at there. Remember we had 1.2 volts or so? Now I've got about 177. Okay. Pin one. Get on it. I think we had like 144 there before. Come on, lead. There we are. About 146. Right, Joe. All right. Guess what? 12x7 now has plate voltage, so I bet you we got modulation. So let me get this thing up right, and we'll test it. All right, here we go. We know that our 12AX7 is happy. So let's see if we got some modulation. Go to mod current. Transmitting. Everything looks good. Put the audio gain somewhere around there. <laughs> uh-huh. So, yeah, there's still no modulation, people. Thought D-Lab had it. Well, guess what? We're going to go back underside and check some more voltages. All right, back to the schematic. So we know that we just fixed the plate voltage issue on the 12AX7, so you would assume that was it. Well, obviously I'm wrong. So let's go over to the 12AU7 now, and let's check... The plates on that one all right now according to the schematic pins one and six are strapped so they should both have the same high voltage so there's pin one little blue jumper wire going to six okay so there is six I do not see any high voltage let's go to one yeah, this is not good at all. So if you look at your schematic, that goes to T3's primary. High voltage goes through T3. And looks like uh, this little yellow lead here goes right there. Yep. So guess what? We're unplugged again. I believe we have an open interstage transformer in that lovely back to our 20k scale on the meteoroid so I'm gonna take this lead and we'll clip it to pin 6 so right there 
and then it goes through six to one, which is here. And nobody's home on the primary of T3. Super bummer. Well, now we know why it didn't have modulation. So this could have been caused by many things. It could have been a shorted tube at one time. Could be that the negative bias went wacko because of all the dried up caps. Maybe somebody's in here goofing around and popped it. But I'm going to have to change that transformer. Let's see if I have any. All right, pulled out the hanger queen. It does have the interstage transformer. You see this one's in lovely condition. Oh yeah, how'd you like to have that loading coil on your Ranger, eh? And the modulation transformer's already gone. So hopefully, Mr. Interstage is good. So let's measure it. And here we go. Got that lead on one side of the primary. And the other one goes right there to the 6AU7. Oh, great. Come on. Come on. Crap. That one's open, too. <laughs> Let's see if I got another hanger queen. All right, another hanger queen. On the high voltage side. We go to this pin of the 6AU7. What do we got? Look at there. We've got continuity on the primary. Good interstage transformer. Let's pull it. Okay, here is the donor interstage transformer. An original Ranger type. So let's check this thing. Okay. So here is the secondary resistance. Looks good. I believe it has a center tap. Yep. Center tap's happy. Primary, which is open on this Ranger. Yabba dabba do. All right. Good transformer. Let's replace it. All right. The Hanger Queen donor is installed. I verified it. There's no shorts. Everything looks cool. Let's fire it up. See if we've got modulation. Right, here we go. Test time. Let's check our... Uh, Plate current, looks good, still got my wattage out. Here's my mod current. Oh, look at there, look at there. Do you see that meter swinging? It looks like I fixed the modulation on the Ranger. <laughs> Terry, oh. Dayton, what are you doing fixing that radio unsupervised? Unsupervised? Unsupervised. Wait a minute. No, you are only the co-star. <laughs> Wait a minute. This channel is D-Lab Electronics, not Emmy Cam. Well, that's too bad. Looks like it's now E-Lab Electronics. <laughs> Slam Obama. Anyways, E-Lab is one letter up, so that means it's one better. So now it's Emmy Lab. Yep, E-Lab. Why not? Doomed. Doomed. <laughs> All right, another Ranger lives on. Obviously, if you have one of these and you got those old paper caps in it, you want to change all of them, okay? That's the reason. If you did, you wouldn't have the first problem, but that transformer, there's no getting around that one, okay? Now, tomorrow... We have something big planned. Yeah, we have a big day at D-Lab. Stay tuned. Yeah, D-Lab could turn into a little bit of E-Lab, but I'm still the boss. Uh-huh. Sure, Mr. Co-Star. <laughs> so, after tomorrow, you guys are going to see D-Lab going to the next level. I might let Emmy be part of it. Yeah. Oh, I might let him be part of it. And guess what? This haircut wasn't yours. And? Yeah, I trained somebody else because you weren't around. So I got it done, girl. Boy. Girl. Boy.